This is completely unrelated to linebackers, but I have to share a moment with you. So Uh Easter time is here, right? I went to go pick up some pizza. Uh, My brother-in-law from down the street came down to the house. So we got, you know, I got pizza. And as I'm walking to the front of uh, Franco's, a Buffalo pizza stable, right? Franco's pizza, very, very Buffalo. For those of you out of towners, don't be jealous. (laughs) We had a little Franco's action going on. And... um, (laughs) You know, I'm walking to the front door and I've got my mask on and I look and I see these things just flying in the wind. My ears just sticking straight out, looking like Dumbo. And then I look at every person in the world having to wear a mask and all their ears pull forward because they're wearing a mask. And I'm like, that's it. I walk among you now. (laughs) You just you can't even tell. You have no idea that I'm here. I walk among you because when I take my mask off. It looks exactly the same. <laughs> like it doesn't change. But I bet you when you put your mask on, it goes whoop, just a little forward, right? I'm sure a lot of a lot of women would like to have that feeling when they take off their bra that the things just stay. <laughs> where's Where's John Mayer when I need him? Gravity. <laughs> Sports is proud to partner with Mr. Rogers Homes. Sean Rogers is a proud Western New Yorker and is now your Arizona relocation specialist. You can see his reviews as a top 1% agent on Zillow, Homes, and Trulia.com. Go ahead and download his free Arizona relocation guide found in the description of this video. Subscribe to his YouTube channel and, as Sean would say, God bless America and go Bills. <laughs> can we even use this? Yes. Like, listen, we got six kids between the two of us. We understand. We get it. Paul, I am. Um, I'm gonna. I'm gonna get a subject that's very touchy for you. Okay. It's not Ohio State cornerbacks. It's not Clemson running backs. Okay. It's not even Little Caesars Pizza. What I want to talk to you about is the Buffalo Bills linebacker depth. Oh yeah, because this has always been a point of I, I've I've agreed with a lot of the things that you've said, but it's always a point of contention because it's like if this guy goes down or if that guy goes down, major changes have to be done, and the Bills seem to have addressed a little bit of their depth in the linebacking room, and I think it's I think it's very very interesting to mm-hmm. see what they've done. Obviously, the two names I'm talking about are Tyrell Adams mm-hmm. and Markel Lee. Mm-hmm. Initial thoughts on. Which which we feel is depth signing, correct? I mean, they're yeah. getting some depth at that position finally, correct? Yeah, that's that's where we're going with this. Yeah, that's right. All right, but I think it's important to discuss the the unique dichotomy of these two players. Obviously, Markel Lee is going to be if if um, if Tremaine Edmonds ha- happens to have any hiccups or has any problems or gets hurt. I mean, that's what I mean. Mm-hmm. Right? If he gets hurt. You got a guy that's that's experienced in there. Markel mm-hmm. Lee, if I'm looking at it, he's started – he was with the Raiders for three years. He's a former fifth-round pick. Well, hold on. Let's back up that fifth-round pick, right? <laughs> Let's back it up a little bit. Back up the truck. Oh, yes. Oh, the screenshot. Yes. Yeah. Well – I sent you the screenshot. You did. You sent – Mario sent me a screenshot of the fifth round uh, where Matt Milano was drafted. And the Bills have had in like the in those eleven picks, I think they've had six of those players. <laughs> Isaiah McKenzie, Nathan Peterman, mm-hmm. uh, Matt Milano. Yep. So you're talking about I mean, but he's I mean, this guy's six three, about two two forty five, two forty, something like that. So he he's a right. typical even though we said the, the NFL seems to be going away from that type of linebacker, he's mm-hmm. he's more of a throwback in that respect. Right. Um yeah, it's. I think there's 2015's a weird draft, right? Because Very, yes. it's there's there's a transition in the NFL to linebackers require you. They were required to get faster. Well, he was in the right. 17. So I'm sorry, 17 draft, not the 2015. Sorry. Who Adams or Lee? Um, Adams was in the Adams 2015. Was, Adams was in 2015. Wait, let okay. me let me let me fact check that because I don't want to get it wrong. Tyrell was 2015 undrafted. 
Tyrell Adams was undrafted in 2015. Um, Markel Lee was the 2017 draft with Milano, McKenzie, and Peter. Okay. 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 So I want to get back to just quickly that that 2015 draft or the 2017 draft. Wait, wait, 2017 draft? Yeah, the 2017 draft, fifth round, went Matt yeah, Milano, get, yeah. Isaac Asiata. Who, who the Bills did have. I want to point out that the Bills had Asiata. For a cup uh, of coffee. Yeah. yeah, let's uh who was it? Shatter Buffalo on Twitter pointed out that the Bills had Asiata before I I think. Twenty nineteen practice squad. Yep. Okay. Okay. Who <laughs> wait, Isaac Asiata drafted by Miami in twenty seventeen. Okay. Just I know, it. right? Um <laughs> So funny how this works out. <laughs> Markel Lee was taken one, two, three, four spots after mm-hmm. Matt Milano. Right. And then uh, three spots after that, Nathan Peterman, Isaiah McKenzie were drafted. Right. And then there was another future bill there. Uh, the real Chris Janke uh, tweeted us at 173 was Brian Allen, who yes. the Bills actually had as well. So out of those 11 picks, the Bills had one, two, three, four, five, six of them. <laughs> those they love picks. those fifth rounders there. But, it must have been they. They must have looked at that board and said, "This is our forever. This is our forever board." But that's what you do. You hold on to your old draft boards because your guy hits the wire. Like, okay, well, where do we have them? Let's just see. You know, where where was his comps? Right where before like before we go digging out old scouting footage. Let's where do we have them? The Bills must have loved that fifth round because I mean they got they got two players out of that fifth round. They must have really thought that fifth round was like. The honey spot. But that was the, I mean, we want to say, it's funny because we want to say that was Whaley. That was Whaley's draft. But. Wait, wait, stop me if you've heard this before. So oh the God. Buffalo Bills depended on uh, Doug Whaley's scouting of linebackers. Okay, you may continue. <laughs> yeah, but then also Doug Whaley's scouting of quarterbacks. He picked up Peterman in that same fifth round. <laughs> Look at what are you doing? I know you're like I know ducking um but I was, the I was getting is... out of the way I was I was Jim from the office <laughs> <laughs> but but Paul all right we're talking about Markel Lee and we're talking about Tyrell Adams two completely right. different players very Markel much so. Lee is more of the old school throwback middle linebacker and then you got mm-hmm. Tyrell Adams who we thought was something very, very interesting. He's six feet, six feet, two twenty eight. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who's he going to back up? You know, right. <laughs> so the interesting thing about Tyrell Adams, when we were doing our homework was Paul, do you know how many reps he did on the bench during his combine, which no. I know it's stupid now to talk about because the guy was no idea. drafted in 20 set or the guy was a free agent in 2017, but right. Yeah. Okay, so one, he was at the combine. So that's, mm-hmm. I think that's important to reference, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like the scouting combine, people go, people just assume every college player goes to the combine and it is invite only. So it's, it's like those, you know, high level, like the senior bowl, that's invite only. So the combine is invite only. I think that's important to call out because not everybody does it. I think it's interesting too because did you ever see Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Yeah. Well, yeah when he goes, she goes to him, she goes, you were an art major. She, he goes, history. It's reputable. <laughs> art, <laughs> art history. So when you talk about, you want to talk about Tyrell Adams. He's like, oh, he went to Georgia, West Georgia. Yeah, <laughs> he didn't go to Georgia. He went to West no. Georgia. Ready? Not those Giants. <laughs> I got you an outfielder from the Giants, Franklin. Not those Giants. Yo, son. Yo, son. <laughs> what the hell is wrong with us? Can that movie be more apropos just to the world of sports? If you haven't seen the major league movies, you are missing out <gasps> because they apply to everything in life. We yes, have quoted them many times. They apply to everything. They do. They absolutely do. Well, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? This is a chance to manage in the big leagues. Let me call you back while you got a guy in the other line about some white walls. I'll talk to you later. All right, back to our discussion because, you know, we just saw a bunch of squirrels and shiny objects. Point being is this. Tyrell Adams at his his bench. Eight. Why even eight? Eight. Why even do it? 
What are you doing with the bench? You did eight? Full disclosure. Hunter's put up more. Full disclosure, I'm 41 years old. I did 10 yesterday. 10. But here's the interesting part, why I mentioned that. This guy played for the Houston Texans last year. Paul, he had 125 combined tackles. Okay, let's pause real quick. Let's pause real quick. Let's address that, this. I think is, that's, I think that's always dangerous. Right. Once we – this is – let's pause real quick. Mm-hmm. Tackle numbers, impressive. They are. They're impressive. They show that he flies around. Started That's 12 games, shows. Paul. Started 12 games. I Yep. Shows that he flied. Well, how many games did Houston win? Like, come on. Right? Like, I, I don't think that's. I don't think that should diminish I, it, the fact that this guy was all over the field. He but was we, flying around. We yeah, talk absolutely. about this. Does, this. does this go completely in line with what Bean and McDermott want? They want football players. Well, you talk right. about a guy that, okay, two things don't measure up here. You did mm-hmm. eight reps on the bench, yet in an, in a sixteen game season, twelve games which you started, you had one hundred and twenty five tackles. Well, that tells you that t- either tells you that teams that ran the football looked at him and said, "Oh, I, I, I'm about to make you. I'm about, I'm about to, run to make that you way. look. Yeah, I'm about to make you look real foolish, <laughs> right? I mean, only like, five tackles for loss. We don't know if he was blitzing a yeah. lot on those. In, in those I don't think so. But I don't think he was. The point being is that this guy is a football player. And mm-hmm. I'm excited for the signing because if Matt Milano happens to go out, who are you more comfortable with? Are you comfortable with a guy like this or an AJ Klein, which we've already seen? You know, this guy isn't he's more of a mold of a Milano. So I uh, here's where I get a little worried, right? So I'm gonna bring out the legend of are you ready? Are you ready to go down a are you ready to go down a rabbit hole with me? Are we going to the Kiko Alonso? No, we are not going to Kiko Alonso. So I want you to go back and put put in your wayback machine. Okay. The Bills' leading tackler in 2011 and 2012. I believe he's the leading tackler in 2012. This is going back a little bit. Okay. I am leading in the tackler in machine. 2011 and 2012. You mean the Chan Gailey led? Um, let me see. The leading tackler for the Buffalo Bills. If I can actually look up stats, I think it was. I think it was leading tackler. It was a lot of tackles. I know it was a lot of tackles. Probably a lot of tackles because they were on the field forever. Wow. Okay. So you're talking about a team that was six and ten mm-hmm. for the Buffalo Bills in 2011. Your 30 mm-hmm. year old, which <laughs> soon to be 30 years old. Mm-hmm. Which is um, you're going on Adams. this journey with me, right? I'm going on this journey. Uh, 130 <laughs> tackles, Nick Barnett. Yep. And what happened when Buffalo cut Nick Barnett after the 2012 season? They had another Any leading idea? tackler. <laughs> they cut their they cut their leading tackler in 2012, right? The coaching change happens. Yes. yes. Right, coach. It happens. Where did Nick Barnett go after that? Did he go to Indy? No, he went to Washington and never started a game ever again what? he signed a one-year deal with washington played 14 games never started had 12 tackles and that was the end of his career he what? went from the leading tackler in buffalo in, in 2011 and 2012 to being released signed and never started in washington and had 12 tackles and that's how his career ended that is so when you talk ridiculous. about tackle numbers don't talk to me about near 30 year old linebackers with 100 plus tackles because that doesn't mean anything, and it hasn't for a long time, right? That's a product of being on a really bad team with a, re- you know, like, God, if you're if you're a linebacker and your team had under eight wins and you had 120 plus tackles and you're almost 30, you're knock knock knocking on. You're on a really bad team and your career is just about to be over. I thought like, you were gonna say heaven's door. I swear to God. <laughs> hey hey, hey hey. <laughs> um, um, yeah, I, that's. I, I mean, comp- that's. Th- that's that's the journey that when you tell me mm. about Terrell Adams mm. and you know where he is, the, I cannot help but think of Nick Barnett and just say, okay, how close to the end of this journey are we? Because don't get me wrong, everybody freaked out when Barnett got cut because he was your leading tackler, but I don't remember Nick Barnett being exceptionally impactful, you know, like coming up with the big tackle. I remember he was always around, he was always there, but it was I I think the Kiko reference is not wrong. 
I remember seeing a lot of the back of Barnett's jersey in plays. I just remember seeing a lot of it. He get there. I just remember seeing the back of his jersey. Okay, so to your point, Paul, um, the Buffalo Bills in that season you were talking about with Nick Barnett, they were (laughs) – defense was 30th out of 32 in points allowed. So Mm -hmm. I can understand the Houston Texans last year were 27th out of 32. (laughs) So I can understand your point. But – I, trying to take the half glass full approach here, you got a you got a guy that it seems like he's from the mold of a Milano. Yeah, you got a guy who has experience playing in the NFL. That mm-hmm. a guy that you you necessarily won't have to waste a draft pick on this draft. You could yep. you could wait for another year to get your depth linebacker signing, mm-hmm. both with Lee and um, both with Lee and. Uh, Adams, you got two guys that could come in, and you know we talk about the we talk about the backup quarterback position. We say, listen, if they can get you to a five hundred record, that's fine. Yeah. If if they could, these two guys who have experience in the NFL, if Adams or if Edmonds happens to go down or needs a break, because these guys have been playing one hundred percent of the snaps for the last two years, Edmonds right. and Milano. Right. So if Milano happens to go out again, or Edmonds happens to miss time. You got guys now in the room that are like, okay, I'm not going to be as worried as I was in past seasons mm-hmm. over that because these guys have experience playing in the NFL. Right. And right. I feel and more again, comfortable about that than a rookie coming in. But well, that doesn't mean they can't draft have, one. You still have, you know, you got Terrell Dotson. He's on year two. He's on a one year deal. One year deal. So you're going to have a restri- you're going to have an exclusive rights free agent next year for Absolutely. again league minimum. So you got another year of Terrell Dotson after this if you want. Neither of these guys are going to stand in his way, right? He'll be able to respectfully earn snaps against guys like that. And I I think it kind of goes to prove. Like, do you remember? Um, do you remember last year the Bills had a linebacker who made the roster? Oh God! What was his last name? Phillips. Who? What was the Del Bills? Sean? Final? Delshawn Phillips, right? Mm-hmm. And everybody was kind of like shocked that Delshawn Phillips made the roster, and he spent basically the entire season on IR. Now he's not on the team, right? Like, it, I think the Bills have tried at linebacker to retain value, and I think they realized quickly that doing it with with young players was probably a mistake. Right, because you look at their season, then they sign Andre Smith, who had been around the block. Then they sign um, uh, uh, Duran Lee, who had been around the block. Like I think they yeah. quickly realized that doing it with rookie or inexperienced linebackers was probably a mistake. Yeah, right. I, I, and, I agree. With you that. look at their in season, and they're not picking up young players. They're picking up guys and taking advantage of those veteran spots on the practice squad. They're picking up veteran linebackers to say, okay, well, we might have. I missed the target here the first time. So let's go get some experience. Let's go get some guys who could come in and play right away instead of bringing in guys who are still learning how to be pros, still learning how to talk about film at an NFL level. Like those, that's a, there's a dichotomy to learning how to be a pro. Like I know it's kind of, it's kind of cliche, but it's not wrong. Like you go from being a college student to being a professional athlete, it's a job change. Oh, yeah. It's not the same. There's there's way more adjustments. That that's why they say you know, you know what? When you get these veterans in, it's so much more, um, it's so much more beneficial for your team because they know how to be a pro already. Mm-hmm. These rookies, like you said, it's a complete l- culture shock. You know mm-hmm. what they have to deal with and to try to right. try to still diagnose. You're you're going up against men now. You were playing college mm-hmm. against guys your age. Now you're going up against men that have been in the league for six, seven, eight, nine years. Mm-hmm. It's tough. It's really tough. Um, I just wanted but to I, mention. No, go ahead. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to mention one more thing as far as statistics go with me. You know how I am with statistics. Remember the relative athletic score? Oh, God, yes. Okay. Um, I wanted to, I'm going to read some things, and I want you to tell me what, your, what you deduce from that. Okay. So they say yellow is okay, green is elite, red is poor. <laughs> Okay. Okay. <laughs> For Tyrell Adams, this is probably why he went undrafted. His vertical jump was in the yellow. You know, he had 33-inch vertical jump. 
I know I'm going okay. back to that, but I just want to get, uh, get a feel, okay. feel for the player. Broad yeah. jump and short, sh- short shuttle were both red for a okay. linebacker. That's how- problems. However. No explosion. That's a, But I just want to point out that, that that's all about explosion. That is right? explosion. They talk about explosion factor, and they talk about short a combination of short shuttle, um, vertical, and broad. Okay. And th- there's there's an explosion factor. Okay, so I, I'm getting I'm getting the profile. Okay, go ahead. So the deal is this: he ran a four six five at the at the combine. His ten and twenty yard splits were elite. They were they were green. They're elite. So what is that? T- taking both of those things into account about this guy, he ran a four six five. He yeah, has which elite, is good for a linebacker. He has elite ten and twenty yard splits, but his Short shuttle and broad jump were of the worst. It's like a bellhop running who forgot the bags. Here's like it my, doesn't make any. Like it doesn't make any sense. To here's me. my question: He's six foot two twenty five, with going to the best training facility in the NFL. What's to say they don't move this guy to the secondary? As a linebacker, that nickel linebacker role, just go, yeah. just go with a bigger nickel just go linebacker. Hunt. You know, we talked about this last week where we said you're going to see a shift where that nickel yes. linebacker is not going to be a safety anymore. There, no. It's going to be a real linebacker. You're going to see a shift to a real 4-3. And I don't think people really took us very seriously on that. Well, I, mean, but I, I, believe, I believe that's what's going to happen. You're going to get linebackers to play a linbacker role. Like, that's it. I know you're just gonna get them smaller and lighter. I know on the surface, I'm trying to you know live vicariously through <laughs> Jeremy Chin and Kyle Duggar. But the point is this: this guy is not that. My point is this: the fact of you have a guy now who is a football player mm-hmm. who had a 120 tackle season last year. And to your point, Paul, about Nick Burnett, I understand it. But this guy is a is a is a football player. You could put him anywhere around this defense. Now, you think of the Houston defense and you think the Buffalo Bills defense. If you put him in that nickel role, like you said, how could he be unsuccessful? Mm-hmm. He's right. great at running in a straight line. Mm-hmm. Put him yeah, off the corner. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> Go well, hunt. That's an interesting thought. That's an interesting thought. Go hunt. <laughs> well, and the Bills really struggled to be able to run three linebackers last year because – your three linebacker set was Milano, Edmonds, and then AJ Klein, and then you lose Edmonds, you know, and now things get a little sticky, and then you lose Milano, and things could get even messier. And then you look at your linebacker room, and you got Delshawn Phillips on IR, uh, Terrell Dodson, uh, you know, and you're just, you're looking at it going, man, maybe we stepped on a landmine here somewhere somewhere along the way because this is not this is not good. I'm telling, this is not a good situation. That's what I'm saying. If you want to run a base 4-3 with Adams, yeah. Milano, and, and Edmonds, and you want to blitz Adams off the corner where um, Hughes is, you still got Edmonds and Milano in coverage. Right. And you got a yeah. speedster just flying off the corner. Right. Why not? Or or you drop <laughs> Adams in coverage with Milano and you blitz Edmonds. Exactly. You know? Yeah. You just got – can we just stop blitzing Edmonds through the A-gap? Please, for the love that's of God. A, that's a whole – that's a mm, – that's an episode. 